what's going on trainers this is trainer connor and you're going to be watching another pokemon battle video here in ultra saiyan moon showdown beta hope you guys are doing well we're in the middle of a heat wave right now it's pretty hot here but i am surviving through it somehow and i hope you guys are doing well at home i don't know when you guys are watching this i don't know when this is going out but i'm posting this and during this heat wave, gosh darn it, it's pretty hot. You just can't do much. But I have time to make a video out of it. So there's something. Other than that, we're doing good. So this is a brand new Pokemon team that I put out here. In the OU tier, once again, it's one of my favorite tiers outside of Ubers. And this team is pretty good. So without further ado, let's jump right into the team preview. I'll see you there. Okay, so the first Pokemon in the squad is Ferrothorn with the Rocky Helmet as its held item. When physical attackers like Scizor or to a lesser extent Megas like Mega Garagos, Mega Lopunny, they get hit by the Rocky Helmet and the Iron Barb's ability, they take recoil damage when they get hit by Ferrothorn. The EVs are 248 HP with 184 Special Defense, so that we can take hits a lot better on both sides of the spectrum. That first one has really good physical defense already, so I might as well put Special Defense EVs in there to make up for the lack of defensive coverage on the other side. And then the rest is in Physical Attack, 76 EVs in there with a brave nature, and we got IVs, speed zero speed, so that gyro ball does a lot of damage. And we also have Thunder Wave to cripple fast sweepers. Okay, so the next Pokemon is Mega Lopunny. I forgot to mention that Stealth Fox from Ferrothorn really helped out Mega Lopunny clean up during the match. We have a Jolly Nature on Mega Lopunny with a Scrappy ability. Got max attack and max speed with four special defense. Fake out, high jump kick, return, and drain punch. In testing matches, I keep missing those high jump kicks. And when you hit a high jump kick and you miss it, you take recoil damage. So that's why I have drain punch in the back end to restore our HP. If we can do this, Megalopenny is pretty frail in general, so we have to be a little cautious when we use Mega Lopunny to its full potential. Now with Dragonite, man, there's so many options you can use Dragonite for. It was hard for me to decide, but for Dragonite, I'm putting him with a weakness policy with multi-scale. It's pretty standard for a Dragonite. Item in nature, max attack, max speed, and for a special defense. Dragon Dance, Outrage, Iron Head, and Earthquake provides solid coverage. It hits almost everything in the tier. Literally. Now for Tornado Therian. I like Tornado Therian in OU because of its ability to use Hurricane over and over, uh, spam knockoff, and then we can get rid of our Life Orb damage that we take by using the Regenerator ability. We have max special attack, max speed, and foreign attack just for knockoff to do some damage. It's pretty much a Pokemon to get rid of items, essentially. It's a nice Pokemon to use in this given team. Greninja is next in the Pokemon lineup, and we've used this Greninja before. Now this Pokemon is our leader. I like to start out with Greninja in most matches, not all of them. But he has a Focus Sash immediately, so I know I can lose a hit. I can scout and see what Pokemon moves I'm seeing from the opposition. We have Scald, Gunk Shot, Dark Pulse, and U-Turn. Provides great coverage and a way to get momentum back on our side of the field. Let's go, Greninja! Our final Pokemon in the squad is Porygon Z. A very fast and a very powerful Pokemon indeed. We have normally MZ for Breakneck Blitz. Uh, we also have Tri Attack, Nasty Plot, uh, Discharging Ice Beam. It's a great Pokemon because you can paralyze Pokemon there. You can set up 
you can use Triakog and use Z Power to really punish Pokemon left and right. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope we can use him. Alright guys, thank you for listening to the team analysis. Remember to leave a like and subscribe. Let's jump right into the battle. Alright trainers, so I found a game and this opponent right here, Napmaster, has a really good team. The main threats are definitely Kamo'o and depending on the Greninja set, also Diancy could be an annoyance. Chansey and Gliscor on the same team should be illegal because I hate both of those. Uh, you see my team right there, you can know I have a Ferrothorn, that's bulky, Mega Alpenny, Greninja, Focus Sash League, uh, Dra Dragonite, and Tornadus, Boron Z. So at the beginning here, I go for a U-turn with when I focus Sash Greninja, get out of there, go into Ferrothorn for the typing matchup. I knew he was going to probably set up Stealth Rocks. There's really nothing I can do about it. I, I predicted him to switch into something different. The funny thing is, is that I'm going to be paralyzed. That makes me even slower. So that means Gyro Ball will do so much more damage. Which I thought was hilarious at the time. So we end up tailing Deasi, which was actually not a big issue. I mean, the only mistake was going for the Thunder Wave. I wanted to get my Stealth Rocks. I can't do them right now because of Gliscor going for Taunt immediately. And then he goes for Earthquake. You can't really do anything and outside of Fire Fang. You can't really do much. Now, he has the Poison Heal as his ability. He switches out, goes into his, I guess you could say, Super Smash Brothers Greninja. I go for the Gyro Ball, which does almost over half, which I thought was insane. But again, you know, I'm paralyzed, which means I'm a lot slower. Finally, I can get my Stealth Rocks in this battle. And I'm okay with Greninja knocking me out. You can't really do much with Chansey around and Kakubulu. So, I'm okay with this. Holy crap, Extra Sensory does a lot of damage. And unfortunately, I get the, or he gets the flinch from that. That means I can't use Tornadus really at all. I figured he was choice in some manner, so I switch out and I go into Greninja and I just go for a U-turn expecting him to switch. And he goes into Tapu Lulu, I'm going to go into Porygon Z. I have the adaptability, not download, that's why I don't have that ability. I go for Nasty Plot, it's my best bet, because I don't know what he's going to do at this point, probably Windhammer, which would probably not KO because you know, I have a little bit of uh, bulky in there. Uh, some bulk in there. I, I can't really say that in the uh, analysis, but a plus two Ice Beam almost KOs Kabu Bulu. And he whirlwinds me out, which is unfortunate. But I will use Poison Z later. You'll see what I mean. I should be faster than Kabu Bulu, so I go for the U turn with Cornegas. That is awesome because I can get more HP back from the Regenerator ability. And now, you're going to see the fun in Mega Lopunny. I use this thing quite efficiently in this battle. I Mega Evolve, go for the fake out on Chansey. I'm like, all right, well, I hate Chansey, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go for the freaking high jump kick and get rid of that monster immediately because I really don't want to face it right now. So I don't know if it was holding the EV light. It probably was, and I'm just glad that it's out of the way. I've got their Pokemon that I just hate so much. It's Porygon, well, not Porygon Z, but like Glyscore. Porygon Z, though, he's gonna come in and use Ice Beam. Or, in this case, I decided to use the Breakneck Blitz, the Z Power. Because I know that will KO. Might as well use it, right? I mean, Ice Beam would work too, but I just wanted to use that Z Power because I had it in the back and I wasn't sure if I would use it other than in that situation, so. In this situation, I thought this Greninja is Scarf. He, I mean, you know, Porygon Z is fast. I'm not sure how fast if you were to compare it with Mega Lopunny. Uh, we'll have to find out later, right? So I lose his switch, so I go for the U-turn with Greninja as he goes into his Komo'o. And I know Komo'o is a monster with his Z-Power, okay? His Z-Power, Glangerous, Soul Blaze, 
is going to boost up his stats. I knew he's going to use that Z power, so I'm going to sacrifice Tornado Therian. And look at that, he gets his boost. He has a plus 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5 in almost every category that you can imagine, except for HP and other other stats that I just didn't come across. But this is great because, well, okay, it's not great in the long run, but the only priority user I have is Mega Wapang with Fake Out. Because a plus one, plus one, Plus one, plus one from Komo'o is going to destroy my team. And the only user that can really put up a fight against it, the Komo'o that is, is Mega Lopani. So I have to keep him alive. I'm going to sacrifice Dragonite, which is unfortunate because this was a weakness policy Dragonite. So he's not going to do much in this battle, unfortunately. We might use him in the future. We'll find out because I really want to use Dragonite. He's very versatile. But this is awesome because he's going for close combat. Every time he uses it, his defenses keep going down and down. So Fake Out will definitely KO the Kamo, And I go for the Great Punch and we find out that this Greninja is not Choice Scarf. So he might be Choice Specs given the situation, the amount of damage he was doing, and vice versa. So I hope you guys enjoyed this battle where Mega Wapani pretty much carried the team under its belt. It was so good seeing that situation arise where I had to use Mega Wapani's fake out multiple times and sacrifice Pokemon even though I didn't really want to do that. That was the only way for me to win that battle because Kamo'o at plus one and almost every stat, it's definitely something that you don't want to see. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was such a great battle. Make sure you give me a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, Shinners.